Welcome back to uh, the Midwest Sports Show. Uh, oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean you see what I – yeah, Gene, I, I'm doing the no, show. No, because at this time I'm actually in the Midwest. Now it makes sense. Uh, yeah, it all it all makes sense. All right, so this okay. is uh, the Midwest Sports Show, and uh, my name is Chris Dots, and live – uh, yes. from uh, a hidden location, a bunker. Is, yes, uh, I'm in a bunker. Is uh, Gene Steichen. Gene, how, how are you? Gene, where are you, first of all? I'm in Elk Grove Village, which is about 25 miles from Wrigley Field, where I was earlier. So okay. it's near it's near the airport. But I, I was in the heart of Chicago earlier. And you're in your oh, – I started out – And you're oh, out of change, I was going to say. Field. You're out of change. Yeah, yeah, You're that's f- right. Oh, yeah, I had to do that today. There's one of the tolls you have to pay. Uh, it's a dollar fifty. This one was only a dollar fifty, but you have to pay uh, exact change, and you have to throw it in a basket. So you can't throw a dollar in there, and uh, and if it doesn't ring you up, you're done for. It won't uh, raise the arm. They, you, so. you immediately get arrested. They pull you over. You get tased. Yeah. Uh, this, I'm telling you, Illinois, there's so much cr- – I paid a lot of tolls this last couple of days or three days or however long I've been here. And there, and you know what? The construction is still going on in the same <laughs> spot that's been going on for decades. And they're they're not building anything. They're not building like a subway I don't or know. anything. No, I don't know what they're doing. They just I mean, paved the streets traffic. over yeah. and over again. And uh, by the way, you know, with I all these know. tolls and all that stuff, you, you think they'd be able to – Stop a lot of these drugs moving around, right? I mean, isn't this a yes. perfect opportunity to search people for drugs and stuff? Keep a couple uh, drug sniffing dogs on yeah, hand. Yeah, there you go. I did run into a drug sniffing dog today, but that was at Wrigley Field. So okay. Yeah. And uh, did you pet him? I did not. You know, they have signs. Oh, they. Oh, then I saw a service dog, and it said, uh, "Don't bother me." All right. <laughs> So I think that's what's it. Jeez. I started out. I started out this morning in Iowa in Dubuque for my mom's. It's my mom's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday! Oh, she's Miss gonna Steichen. see this later. So yeah, so we need a happy. She's thirty eight backwards. So uh, we we had a party for her Saturday. Oh, last night we drove to Davenport and saw the King and I. Fantastic! All right, great. Terrific. And then uh, I went out with her today on her birthday, and then I left her behind and drove to Chicago. Well, uh, she was. I offered to take her to regulate. Well, but she, a, didn't well she wasn't allowed in the press box, anyways, Gene, which we will uh, oh, discuss later. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go through all of your uh, your steps okay. on your journey okay. back to uh, the Midwest uh, in a little bit, yeah. uh, but we uh, do have uh, quite a bit to uh, talk about again. Okay. It's okay. Baseball season. Yeah. Is fresh sure. upon us, and a lot of games going on, a lot of stuff, a lot of drama already. Gene, we're old. The season's only a week old. Oh yeah, and, we uh, played the Cubs. Played the Brewers already. You're right. Yep, yep. The series yep. are over, so we'll talk about that. And Gene, I think we actually will lead on that. Uh, and yes, the Chicago Cubs did uh, head to Milwaukee. The 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 I ninety four series, right? That's what they call this thing. Yes. Yeah. I guess they do. It's only what eighty miles from Wrigley to. American Field Institute Park. My, my cousin, <laughs> Insurance. I did not go to the game Friday. I was going to go Friday. Thank goodness I didn't because I would have saw the Cubs lose again and Quintana get torched. But my sister and brother came home, so I went there. But my cousin and her uh, uh, hubby, they went to the game. Uh, and it's still called Miller Park. What the hell? It's it, it's not called that, but they haven't taken the sign down yet. Wow. Well, probably because Miller has to uh, pay for the bill to take that thing down, right? The little, yeah, uh... so there, I got some inside information for you yeah. on that one. Uh, and right. it was a beautiful day Sunday, and they left the roof closed. That's <laughs> the thing. Well, there you go. Uh, well, Gene, you so you did not go to game one, huh? I did not, thank goodness. I, I actually went home instead because it would have been too much. Cause my sister flew from Texas, and my brother drove from Omaha, so I'm thinking, well, that would look kind of bad if I just – blew him off to go to Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, uh, alone to a uh, Milwaukee Brewers game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if and you had your family and all that stuff, it would be uh, yeah. something different. But uh, I, did, I did weigh my options, but I thought, well, I'll go home. And then uh, so when I was there, I was so thankful I didn't go because, uh, wow. Yeah, another Katana, Katana, Katana. This, this guy who's uh, known as a Brewer killer. 
I know. Uh, I know. That's why I think they held him back for the Brewers. Yep. Well, I think he's more of a paper tiger, Gene. He, he, he's killing us, and we gave up so much to get him. That's what really – we gave up by uh, Eloy Jimenez, who the, the uh, White Sox signed to a major league contract, even though he's not even played major league yet, <laughs> or going in the year. And then uh, we gave up our one of our top prospect pitchers. It's awful. It's yeah, ugly. Yeah. Quintana. Oh well, he God. threw a ton of pitches early. I think it was like up to 60 pitches within like three. And it, well, I think it only lasted like three and a third. Yeah, he gave up like eight that, right? earned runs, eight yep. hits, probably 15 walks. I mean, Eric, Eric, just... Eric Thames is getting home runs off these guys, you know? Yeah. Not looking good. And it's killing the bullpen because these guys are only going three innings or four innings. And I don't know about Eugene, but the Cubs just look, they're making tons of errors. They just look lifeless. Yeah. Sloppy. Had, that's that's what that's what bothered me, except for today. Now today, hopefully, turn it around. But yeah, Monday they had six errors. They, yeah, how about some passion? The, the season just started. <laughs> Don't quit yet. Yep. Before he even got home, they sent their one of their top relievers to the minors, and I was just worried uh, that Joe Madden, him and his <laughs> RV uh, cruising machine, where he picks up teenage women, <laughs> right? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. No, well, Gene, well, you I turned against him now too, to huh? Chicago. No, I am not. I'm glad he made it to Chicago today. That's all. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, I wonder if there was a, uh, a seat next to that pitcher uh, on the bus uh, back to uh, Muncie, Indiana Carl Edwards or whatever. Senior, it got sent to the minors. He was huge in their World Series year. Uh, it's a, well, it is was, he hurt or is he just not good? No, he he got – he keeps getting torched. I don't know. He's a metal <laughs> How can you send him to the minors it's already? It's only uh, April 8th. How, how does no, that work? he didn't make it to – and he's one of their best relievers, supposedly. Jeez. It's – that road trip was had to be the worst road trip of all time because it's set. Uh, I don't know. Well, you guys did kind of make a little mini comeback, uh, but uh, yeah, d- d- it did not happen. And it uh, looks like you guys yeah. were just going to get swept, uh, and you guys were going to be looking bad shape in the division. However, the next uh, next day, you guys uh, made a, a oh, rousing okay. comeback. And Gene, what did you? So you did go to this game, huh? I didn't go to any games in Milwaukee. Oh. <laughs> No. All right. Well, Saturday we had see we had, Saturday we had a birthday party for my mom. Happy birthday, mom! And then Sunday I took my mom to Davenport for a birthday. Happy birthday! So I didn't I didn't get to see any of the Milwaukee games in person. That is, okay. yeah. But I watch it with a lot of Cub fans. So all right. And then Saturday, hey, the Cubs can hit. This is the, they've been doing a bunch of this, ten runs and more. Yep. So uh, they scored a lot, and uh, Jason Hayward. I don't know. Playing Milwaukee, yeah, he looks like an all star all of a sudden. He had three home runs yeah. in the series, two a two home run game. I think on That's Friday, right? Or he Saturday? was leading the league in double plays. Yeah, he had two on Saturday. I everybody is like, oh, we have the worst contract in baseball. And then, and then he, I don't know. I just don't know. He's a tough one to figure out. Is he? Yes. Is he going to maintain it? Did he do anything today? In in the uh, game. I don't think so. He got oh, he got intentionally walked so Lester could come up. <laughs> And Lester got uh, hey, hurt, so that paid off, though. Yeah, yeah. We right. run into this. All right, and then the next day, uh, it was more of a pitching duel. Um, uh, yeah. But Ryan Braun with a three-run home run again. He had a he's he's, he's been playing uh, pretty well, and uh, yeah. So the Cubs lose two out of three. They're one and what they, seven they, at the time? Two. They were they were two and two seven. And seven. Listen, listen. They winning. Uh, go Cubs. Winning, t- winning one game in Milwaukee almost seemed like a moral victory. It, it really did. It would have been a disaster to get swept. Because yeah. then they, yeah. But they, uh, I don't know. So they, w- they, they start out in the road. They won two games out of nine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's a little unfortunate, right? Nine games uh, to yeah. start off with. Not Boston went through the same thing. I think they went two and eight on the road or something like that. Yep. Yeah. All right, and uh, Joe Madden's feeling the heat. Everyone's feeling the heat. Uh, you know who else is feeling yeah. the heat? Theo Epstein. Theo had to apologize. The GM. Uh-oh. Yeah. He wrote an apology letter to the fans. Jesus, it's only yeah. April, uh, and this is Saturday. I this is before know. the game on it Saturday. Was, I'm telling you, that road trip was a disaster. This is. It let me just read this letter really quick. There is always a search okay. for scapegoats when you get off to a tough start, Epstein said, and the Cubs dug out before Saturday's game against Milwaukee Brewers. Pitching coach uh, Tommy Hudovay is not the problem. He's a big part of the solution. Okay, uh, Owner Tom Ricketts is not the problem. 
Okay, he's the one that said uh, they don't have enough money to sign Machado. Okay, all right. I saw Tom Ricketts today, by the way. Oh yeah. All right. Did you? Was he the problem? He no, I guess apparently not. Not. Oh, I saw Theo today too. Oh wow, there you go. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, it's not a resource issue. I know he's another one that's been talk- taking a lot of heat. It's not a resource problem. Uh, if problem have a problem with the allocation of resources, then that's on me. And is uh, and has been ever since I got here with a lot of good and some bad. The bad. Now, this is a uh, editorial. The bad that Epstein was referring to mostly on the mound, where last offseason yeah. he sunk 126 million into you, Darvish, 38 million to Tyler Chatwood, wow, and 21 it, million dollars into Brandon Morrow. None has even come yeah. close to paying off. It was that. I mean, Brandon Morrow was okay. Uh, he was pretty good there for a while, but then he got hurt. But yeah, those contracts are awful. And not to mention the Jason. Forget what he did in Milwaukee. The Jason Hayward contract's been another disaster. Yeah. And that that's why we don't have Bryce Harper. So yeah, three. Yeah, home- you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, I, he uh, listen. He got him a title. So and I'm not mad at, him, but a lot of people are like, wow, what the hell's Theo doing? And then, uh, so he, that was a good apology. He drank the cool, he's, he's trying to buy himself, uh, out of a shitty team. That's, that's, that's what's going on. It's yeah. not really working out. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, but Theo can just bounce anytime though, right? I mean, isn't his contract almost up? Well, isn't he's he got a really great, no, he's got three years left. Okay. He's got a great contract. He's making a lot of money. I think he wants to redeem himself before he bounces. And, uh, he wants. He doesn't want the Cubs to be a one and done, so they're not. We'll they're not going to win a World Series in the next three years, Gene. Right? What? <laughs> yes. <They're, laughs> Gene, mm-hmm. that you Darvish deal no, fucked them over, that. right? I mean, the Brandon. Oh, but you, hey, you lasted uh, the first outing. He only lasted two innings. This time, he the last time he went four. So, uh, we'll see. Yep. All right, so uh, not not good when your GM is uh, apologizing for the uh, yeah after the after eight game, I know that just uh, yeah yeah you're right yeah all right yeah all right and then Gene uh, so you were at the home opener uh, Pittsburgh at I Chicago was. so yeah. the 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 game was at one p.m. one ten p.m. yeah uh, this afternoon uh, so and you uh, so uh, tell me the process of getting your tickets and all that stuff. Well, First thing was uh, getting here. That's always an ordeal. And and I park. I found out. I figured out parking. I am. Because you can't park in Wrigleyville. There's no parking. You have to take a train. But I park on Addison, which is one of the cross streets, about a mile away and just walk. So I, I wanted to wait. And then uh, about a uh, half hour before the game, I was at the Cubby Bear. And that's when I pulled the trigger. I could have got t- tickets cheaper, but I didn't want to miss the first pitch of a new season. I wanted to be there for him. Okay. So, so how many? So how long before the game? Sorry, I think you said this, but how long? About before a half, the, hour. half hour. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's not. That's that's you know I I don't think yeah. you can blame it. I mean, how much would you have saved? Twenty bucks? I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to miss anything. And uh, oh, it was so great. And you though. got you got really good seats, right? The fourteenth row. Got, I got in the first box where the first field. You can't go any lower than me unless you go. I and I'm in the fourteenth row. So in the first section between home plate and the uh, first base dugout. So I, I was right in the middle of it. 14th row. Yes, great. Yeah, baseball. Those seats have to be three or $400 face value. I paid 188 Oh, That's pretty good. And that's, that's all in. That's with all the fees and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, it was great. Oh, with the fees, is a little bit too high. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's no problem. But I mean, I mean, I mean, the, the, before last week, the cheapest tickets were going around there for standing room. So yeah, yeah. it was, was, and, and I wonder, you know what, since they're not, I, I, I might not see him again for a while. I just want to get good seats. Yeah, it for was, sure. It was so worth it. Well, opening and day. I, I sat down and I never left my seat the whole time. No, oh, really? Dang. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, opening day for the Cubs. I mean, that must be a pretty. It's not, have you? It was great. Did you? Yeah, you went, you went last year, right? How many years in a row have you seen? Oh, I've gone every year, but last year they got snowed out, and uh, so I didn't see them. But I think I've gone uh, the last, I don't know, probably at least five years in a row at the Cubs home opener. And they had all those guys in the press box. I think you're going to say so. They all threw out the first pitch. Billy Williams and Ryan said they had five guys throwing out the first pitch. Billy Williams, B- Billy D. Williams. I mean, who who's Billy Williams? Is he a Cub? I don't. That's not a name I recognize. Yeah, Ferguson Jenkins, Ryan Sandberg, Lee Smith. There's Ooh, like Ryan Sandberg guys. is coming back to Wrigley. I thought he hated the Cubs organization because they snuffed him. Hey, hey, they made up. 
Hey, yeah. he's, well, hey, he's he, he, he knows Madden's uh, on the outs, so uh, he's trying to be yeah. like, yo, what's up? He needed everybody to pull together. And then and then uh, <laughs> I saw Theo's, uh, he was right, because I actually have better seats than Theo. Theo was in, him and Jed Hoyer were in their normal spots, and Tom Ricketts was in his normal seat. So everybody was right where they're supposed to be. So great, great game. Like a big happy yeah. family, huh? Yeah, and uh, everybody, that's what's great about Wrigley Field. The game starts, that place is packed, ready to go. <laughs> With a nice buzz, nice buzz. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can feel the alcohol in the air. All right, so Gene, uh, we were talking about, well, Gene, uh, all was welcome to yeah. Wrigley Field, uh, except uh, maybe if you're a female. Uh, because a few hours before Monday's Pirates-Cubs game started, Chicago Sun-Times reporter Madeline Keeney, Notice a new sign on the press box, a pass, uh, a sign for the press box annex, apparently from 1945, bearing the line at oh. no women admitted. Oh, my. And it's still wait, How? What? So basically, this is like an old sign from like the 40s or whatever. And they're bringing yeah. back a bunch of this uh, old crap. Uh, and uh, yeah, so and also, I, I got to say, it, it was basically a sign that said, uh, like, you know, press box, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a phrase that said, no women admitted. And it wasn't like the biggest. It wasn't like the whole sign said, no women's admitted. So I can see how someone could have just picked it up and not really been, like, paying too much attention to it and hung it up. But still, yeah. uh, well, also, you know, it's like, geez, are we, were that, do, do you think people actually mean that? I mean, did people put that up because they don't want women in the press box these days? No, I mean, on one hand, I think we're being a little bit too sensitive here. But on the other hand, it's like, uh, yeah, kind of a, it's the Cubs, so I'm going to shit on them. How about that? Wait. <laughs> no, I saw all the news trucks were there today, and uh, a few of them were women. So they were oh. all right outside Wrigley. Oh, so there you go. And uh, I, the Telemundo lady, she was a woman, uh, and she looked right at me. Looks like I was giving an interview, but I go, no, no, no Espanol. <laughs> and she's like, uh, neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm, so- all, I'm all for the women. All right, and uh, but yeah, so basically, once that tweet went up or whatever, I think that sign was taken down like within the hour, or something like wow. that. So I uh, didn't know that. Okay, well there yeah. you go. Yep, not the biggest deal in the world, but just kind of a funny yeah uh, dunk on the uh, the Cubs there. All right, so Gene, let's actually talk about the game. Um, Cubs won ten zero, big game. They were awesome. Big game. I, uh, I w- go ahead. In the second inning, they they had two outs and a guy got on base, and then they walked Hayward to get to Lester. And I told the guy next to me, who I didn't know, but I said, that's a mistake pitching to Lester. He can hit. And yep. he's a he's a gamer. Oh, he got on base, and he ended up uh, having to slide twice before he scored. Yep. And that's when uh, he well, never recovered. Well, that. he, he scored. He scored, and he came up a little gimpy. I mean, God, John yeah, Lester yeah, looks like he's 45. Uh, John Lester looks like he's 45 years old. I, I'm pretty sure the guy's not in the best shape. <laughs> okay. I, Wait a second. Well, it looks like it. He was pitching good, so they they scored six runs with two outs. Of course, the Brewers, or not the Brewers, the Pirates, one guy, their shortstop, had three errors in one inning. Ooh, so ouch. that helped. Uh, yeah, then and, John, uh, John Lester with that pulled hammy, yeah. he like gave up, what, two hits like right away or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he, he gave up a hit. Then I think he might have either walked a guy or gave up a hit. And they came out and got him. And then everyone around me is like, there goes Madden with the quick hook again. <laughs> I go, believe me, he's there's something wrong with them. Yeah. And then and then I immediately looked at Theo and Jed, because uh, they were they were right behind me, but they, they have a suite, but they're real close to me. Um I mean and they both got on their phones right away. So I was oh, like, yeah. Oh, that was the bottom of this. Uh, but, but then then they put, then I, I looked at the Cubs beat reporter and also on the scoreboard they put I uh, Left hamstring tightness. Ooh, right. Too much running. There you go. He didn't. He didn't get the victory, even though he should have. Yep. All right. And then uh, for replication, replication, the Rizzo goes ahead and uh, hits a liner right at uh, Talion or Tayon, whatever this guy's name. Oh, uh, yeah. Right in the head. Right. Yeah. That ball went flying. Did you see that? Yep. Were you live at I, that? Yep. 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 Yep, that was in the second, or that was in the second inning as well. I think the six run inning. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, there you go. Just head hunting, sniping, huh? And then, and then, yeah, because of that, they hit Chris Bryant later. 
Oh, dude, Not every... <laughs> Maybe that was just an accident. Maybe yeah, that was probably. an accident. All right. Well, speaking of, uh, well, anyway, so are you going to the Cubs game tomorrow then, or what's the rest of the? There's no game. No, no, no. <laughs> what? God, God, come on. No they, home game and then this? no game Tuesday. Yeah, because they wanted to build in the buffer, so it was beautiful today. It had to be near 70. They said it was their best weather ever for a Cubs home opener, and last year it got snowed out. So then tomorrow there's no game. It's supposed to be about 60 and beautiful. Wednesday, 39 and snow. Right, there so you go. why don't they take Wednesday's game and move it to Tuesday? Yeah, how about that? Move all the games forward and then just have them a, give them a day off. On I guess that Wednesday. they can. But yeah, this is my last Cubs game here. All so right. I saw their road opener and their home opener, and both games the Cubs scored Cubs scored 10 runs. So I feel a lot better about them today. <laughs> the two games. <laughs> Hey, like, well, I guess there's were singing and three dancing games. in the stadium. Oh my gosh, it was so great! Then everyone went over to the Cubby Bear and other bars, and they're singing and dancing. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, for one day, we're not awful. All right, there you go. There you go. Well, at least you, uh, at least you got your money's worth, right? Oh, it was perfect. It was so wonderful. That's yeah. Good. yeah. All right. Well, speaking of uh, beaning people. And uh, mm. getting hits and uh, brawls and all that. Uh, quite a situation in, I believe it was it Pittsburgh? I believe it was Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, when the yeah. Reds played the Pittsburgh Pirates. And a series of events uh, spurned a brawl in the game. Oh. Uh, yeah. So basically some Red player, I'm not sure what the guy's name is, although I think he's a pretty good player, uh, hit a home run, a, a dinger, a, a towering hit. And uh, I got to admit, Gene, the guy stared at that hit a little too long. Quite long, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't blame uh, the Pirates at all. So, uh, and Chris Archer is the uh, was the pitcher, and uh, he took offense to that. And the next time the guy went up, threw a fastball behind him, behind his ass. Behind wow. Him. And then that okay. set off uh, the Reds manager coming out. Uh, and the umpire only gave him a warning. I, I, listen, I got to you know agree with the Reds manager here. The guy should have been thrown out. I mean, that's a uh, blatant, you know, throwing at some guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yes. uh, yeah. So, uh, too bad. And, hey, how about uh, instead of throwing it behind the guy, how about you strike him out? Huh? How about you do that? How about you strike him out? And then you do your – hey, how about you do your little arrow, fucking Chris Archer? No, no, that's uh, no, that's the Cubs guy, right? Doesn't Chris Archer – Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking oh, of Archer. Yeah. No, Chris Archer, he pitches for the Pirates. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. I was going to say Chris Archer, he does the arch thing, but no, that's not him. Okay, so never mind. Oh, okay, all yeah, right. Yeah. But, but it, it's the Cubs guy that does the arrow thing, right? Who who does the arrow thing? Uh, uh, or maybe it was the Seattle? Is it King? No, who is that? I don't know. There you go. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm doing? You know what I'm saying, though, right? That does the, like, the arrow, like, psh, when he, like, gets the three outs, the closer? Do you know what I'm talking about? Someone oh, does that. Pedro Stroke does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a Cub. He did that today. Yep. What? He was up ten nothing. He's their closer, and they brought him in, and he got three outs. And he, he, he thought they he would have saved you know a one run game and the yep. World Series <laughs> way celebrated. Yeah, shoot that arrow, shoot that arrow, buddy. Yeah. You're shooting. He does the that. He does that. Yep. yep. All right, and then uh, so and then that kind of starts off uh, a benches clearing brawl with Yasiel P- Puig. Uh-oh. Kind of the main, uh, the guy's hot, a little, little hot-headed, and uh, just yeah. going crazy, pushing everyone. Joey Votto is trying to keep him back, and uh, it seems like after a while, everything after everything settled in, Puig goes right back at uh, Archer, whoever. Maybe it was like, I don't know, some other guy, but uh, yeah, and then uh, pretty much taking on the whole team by himself. Did you uh, you get a chance to see this, Gene? I did not. I did not see it. I just read about it today. All right, you should you should watch the video. Pretty uh, entertaining okay. video. Okay. And uh, I tell you what, Gene. I always thought uh, Puig was kind of a bit of a, a douchebag. Uh, <laughs> I, I I'm not a fan either. But so. I, I, I I watch this. Watch it, Gene. Because I, I I love him now. I love him now. After seeing him just acting crazy for yeah. his own teammate, even though he's probably been on the team for only like six weeks, he's still uh, going crazy after someone like uh, goes after his right, teammate. I'll watch it. I'll get back to you on a that be- one. A, 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 especially like in Cincinnati. You think a guy like Puig goes to Cincinnati, he's going to check out. But uh, he's hot. He's hot. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. All right, nice. so fun stuff in Pittsburgh uh, yesterday. Yep. So. Yep. All right, and then, Gene, we're going to end the uh, baseball segment with a uh, quote from Albert Pujols. 
He addre- oh, how's he doing? Uh, by the way, the he... Bre- the Brewers are playing the Angels uh, right now. Oh, that's right. They go. Oh, they're playing they right this. now. Yep, they're did, in Anaheim. Did you see the bee? I did see the bee attack in Anaheim. Yeah, they got a lot of problems yeah. uh, in Anaheim. Uh, they got a bees. They got a trout. They got a lot of animals. A lot of animals going on. It's like a barn over there. The bee. Oh, hey, by the way, when I was in Dubuque, I saw four groundhogs frolicking. I when when I was growing up, we didn't have groundhogs, but apparently they live there now. So wow. there you go. Spreading rodents, yeah. right? Yep. R- locusts, cool. not locusts. They're cute, but vermin. they do a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, Pujols addressed his 2012 decision to sign with the Angels over the St. Louis Cardinals in an interview uh, in, in depth with Graham Bissinger. Uh, I'm a big fan of Graham. No, I'm just, I have no idea who that is, <laughs> which is airing in syndication this week. And during the interview, uh, recorded in spring training, Pujols told uh, that he did not appreciate the way the Cardinals handled negotiations at the time. Uh, I felt that the approach that they took wasn't showing me that they wanted me to be a longtime Cardinal, Pujols said, adding, I believe I made the right decision. Uh, the Cardinal way, Gene, the, uh, the underpay your uh, greatest uh, baseball yeah, player, the, right. the Cardinal way. There you go. Well, um, they did the right thing. Everybody knows that. Well, Gene, maybe they did a uh, carbon dating analysis on him uh, right. and it's, realized he was actually 42 years old. You know, that, yes, I agree with you. Yep. Yep. And uh, Gene – did you know he's got three more years of this ten-year contract? I know. I no, I didn't know it was three, but I know it forever. And I think it escalates to forty or thirty million or some crazy number. Yeah, and he's uh, he's thirty-eight years old. Uh, that's kind of yeah, right, a little right. ridiculous. He's so. got, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, officially he's thirty-eight years old, but he very well could be like forty-five. He's playing like he's forty-five. Well, no, not no offense to the Brewers, but I hope the Angels play better this week against them because, uh, yeah, we All got right. some room to make up. Well, uh, Arcia just uh, hit a uh, single, a uh, RBI single. So, um, all right. So we'll see about that. All right. So, uh, Gene, we're going to move on from uh, baseball oh, sh- to the NFL. And the big story uh, this week is uh, I know. the uh, Mike McCarthy, Aaron Rodgers uh, relationship that was on Bleacher Report in a pretty lengthy piece. Now, Gene, did you uh, did you read this? I didn't read the report. I was too bit. I had too much going on. Uh, but I I read the the big quotes. Pretty pretty Highlights. remarkable. Yeah. Well, well yeah. basically, uh, one of the local beat reporters who worked uh, for the uh, you know Green Bay Gazette or whatever, uh, whatever, pretty much uh, deep, deep, uh, uh, dipped deep into his sources and pretty much constructed a story about what happened between Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. And the big takeaway is that uh, Aaron Rodgers is a huge uh, a-hole uh, who is uh, very bitter and uh, cuts off people forever from his life. And uh, holds grudges, like he held a grudge uh, that Mike McCarthy was the offensive coordinator for the 49ers in the draft and picked Alex Smith while he wallowed in the green room, Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he would freeze out receivers who didn't do what he wanted to do, and receivers felt like they uh, you know, had to choose between uh, A-Rod and the coaches telling them to do this, but then A-Rod saying, hey, go do this, and blah, blah, blah. And then Mike McCarthy is depicted as a complete moron who uh, felt that he was a genius after winning the Super Bowl and uh, refused to uh, change up his offensive style and uh, was completely checked out by the end of his term and uh, was actually getting back massages uh, instead of attending team meetings. Yeah, and is that code for anything else? I mean, nobody knows what was going on. Well, there, but, was, was yeah. it the same uh, gal that uh, right. Robert Kraft was going to? Yeah, did they fly her up there? Yeah, this private whole jet. thing is very disturbing. I don't want to. I don't want to be mad. Are you? How do you feel about him? Right? I. I don't know. No, well, I, that. Those, he. he well, he's a competitor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, he did uh, actually uh, record a segment on uh, Tausch and Wild or whatever. Uh, this uh, ESPN radio show and some uh, quotes have leaked out, basically denying everything uh, right. in the story right. and saying. Uh, you know, it's just the same old bitter players saying the exact same shit, and he's uh, referring to uh, Jermichael Finley and uh, Greg Jennings. Yeah, 
And he uh, yeah, said something to that, effect. That, that's, as soon as you said that, as soon as you said that, then I thought of Greg Jennings. So, I didn't know Finley, too. Yeah. And he said to the effect that uh, when do you ever hear from these guys, unless it's a story about A-Rod, right? So uh, these guys are just throwing out these quotes whenever. And he basically said it was a complete lie and that they're uh, all uh, – uh, him and uh, McCarthy were alpha males who were competitive and they butted heads. But uh, in the end, it was a good relationship. And then uh, Mike McCarthy pretty much said the same thing. So, Gene, I, you know, I, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I, everyone's mm-hmm. perceptions of events are always different than what actually happened. Uh, I do think that A-Rod probably is a vindictive a-hole. I mean, the guy hasn't talked to his family for five years, right? I yeah, mean... that stuff is very disturbing <laughs> with the family. Yeah, I mean, they're your family. I don't know. I don't. I Right, right. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, in a, I'm with you. And then also I'd say Mike McCarthy, I mean, the everyone thought his offense was a joke uh, at the end of the last two seasons. So, uh, I mean, again, I'm yeah. sure it wasn't as bad as uh, the story makes it out, but I'm sure it wasn't all rosy uh, either. So, yeah. All right. So there you go. Interesting read. Everyone should read it, I suppose. And then read the, uh, they should yeah. update it with the uh, comments from uh, A-Rod. I, I, they're so lucky to have Aaron Rodgers. That's all. Please win. Make it. Uh, please let this coach be good. Well, and then speaking about the Packers, it was uh, the Packers had uh, what do you call it, workouts today. So Matt Lafleur uh, addressed the team for the first time. So hopefully, um, hopefully they uh, worked well, I guess. Oh yeah, and then uh, uh, blah blah blah. He 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 denied that uh, Ted Thompson uh, said to him, uh, you know, don't mess it up or something like that, or I don't know, something like that. He said that was not true. That that was a lie about that quote. So well, as a part owner. I I I I haven't heard. I knew we we had problems with Mike McCarthy, but I didn't know all this Aaron Rodgers stuff. So I'll yeah. get more answers at the, the <laughs> meetings. In yeah, Gene, do a printout of the story and say I want oh. answers. What what is going on here? Why weren't we aware of this? Why didn't anyone tell me about this? Massages, getting massages. Yeah. All right. And then Gene, here's a uh, here's kind of a sad story. I suppose is uh, well, not I suppose, but definitely. Sad story right now. Uh, Kelly Stafford, uh, Matt Stafford's uh, wife, um, announced on Instagram oh. that she has uh, brain cancer. So, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry. has a brain tumor, and she will have surgery later this month. So, uh, no, no jokes for me on this one, Gene. Uh, hopefully uh, yeah. she gets better. Oh, right. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you yeah. go. I do uh, – I will say this still. Uh <laughs> Uh-oh. Why is it that uh, a nice, pretty, blonde, white chick with a brain tumor, everyone uh, is going, oh, my God, that's so sad, and blah, blah, blah. How many of these other uh, NFL players' wives are getting brain tumors? How about that? <laughs> and no one gives a fuck, huh? How about that? All right. Okay. Uh, we don't we so don't need to drop that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to do a little white privilege, uh, call All a little right. white privilege on this, right? All right. Yeah. And then, Gene, we're going to move over to uh, the Hoops tournament, uh, March Madness. Yeah, As the championship's were. going on right now. Why is the title game starting at 9.20 Eastern time? That is crazy. Well, um, I have no idea because they, they don't want kids to watch it, I guess, on the I East know. Coast. I mean, basketball was invented, like, in uh, New York, wasn't it? Well, pretty much. I mean, yeah. it was invented in Canada, but, I mean, it, like, got big in the streets of New York, right? So. It's right. It was invented in Kansas. Was it? it was, oh, Naismith was a Canadian, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he's Canadian. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I should believe you, but go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah, why would you want uh, little kids in uh, New York City uh, watching basketball? I mean, they're, they're playing Fortnite. Why would you want them uh, watching a real sport? So, anyways, Gene, uh, let's just do a recap of the Final Four. I said I was going to watch the Final Four. Uh, did not watch one minute. Did not watch one minute of it. <laughs> um, I watched a little bit. I watched. I was, yeah. I watched. Because well, my niece and nephew went to, my niece went to Texas Tech and my nephew's going there, so. Well, speaking of Texas Tech, they played, what, they played Auburn, right? Auburn, is that correct? Or no, did yeah. they play Michigan State? No, that was Virginia. Okay. Yeah, Tech played uh, Michigan State. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, to uh, lift their spirits, to give them a pep talk, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, uh, give a pep talk in the locker room before the game. That's got to be pretty cool. You got this freaking the greatest football player of all time giving you a pep talk. That that's got to nice. be in, in, inspiring, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it should be. We'll um, see. I mean, they're they're well, we'll no by the time people see it, but yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for Tech. I I don't really. Yeah. Well, they beat the Spartans. They beat Michigan State, so no problem yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't care. Uh, and then, of course, the big controversy was the Auburn-Virginia game. 
Right. Uh, I did see the end of that. Where Bruce Pearl, of course, uh, used to coach uh, UW Milwaukee, my uh, alma mater. Yeah. Alma mater. And he was assistant coach in Iowa. By the way, Gene, did you know that? Uh, uh, you know, everyone talks about how Bruce Pearl is like a, a uh, you know, just a bad person, and all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, you know, I never even knew really what he did. Uh, wow. So actually, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and uh, yeah, he was doing all that booster stuff, and you know, paying kids and letting kids come over to his, uh, you know, grill outs and all this stuff and all that stuff. Uh, and then he uh, kind of asked a bunch of people to lie about it, and he lied about it too. But I mean, you, you they act like. You know, he freaking killed a kid in a car or so, or he gave drugs to a kid or something. Jesus Christ. I oh mean, it's, the <laughs> we're mad at this guy? I mean, the NCAA is a joke. And, well, the uh, NCAA is suspended. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, everyone's acting we'll like see. this guy's like the worst guy in the world. It's like, Jesus Christ. He just uh, he just didn't want to get caught because the, the NCAA is a hypocritical organization. It doesn't give a fuck about the kids. <laughs> I don't care about the kids. Yeah, you guys really uh, helped out a lot of kids by suspending Bruce Pearl. Okay, all right. Um, anyway, so the big controversy, of course, was that uh, one of the Virginia kids uh, shot a corner three, missed yeah. it, uh, but was yeah. fouled. And Gene, I don't know. Foul too. Well, I don't understand. What did you say? It's not a foul. No, wrong guy to foul. He oh yeah. Fouls, and then yeah. he uh, made three uh, three free throws, and they won the game. But Gene, I I don't understand the controversy here. I mean, the kid shot. He was up in the air, and the guy undercut him. I mean, you can yeah. break an ankle. You can break a leg doing that. So that's, I mean, just because the guy shot, you, you can't hit the dude yeah. after he shoots. You know what I mean? Like, what's the problem here? He I undercut know. him. You know it's what I mean? Last, it's just the last play of the game. Dude. However, yeah. ha- however, I will say this. There was another play before uh, that play where, uh, oof, Yelich uh, caught the ball. Oh, Pujols. <laughs> Pujols is going to get thrown out. He forgot to tag up. Pujols, you fucking old man, you piece of shit. Uh-huh. Look that up. So basically, uh, Pujols was on second. Yelich made a great catch. Pujols ran the third, and uh, Yelich threw the ball to second. And Pujols is such an old-ass guy with bad knees, could not make it back. What a joke. $28 million for that guy? Get fucked, Pujols. All right, I've been playing too many video games. All right, so I'm trash talking a little bit too much. All right, yeah. and uh, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so the play even before that, when uh, Virginia was outbounding the ball, uh, the guy dribbling hit his ankle or hit his uh, heel, and the ball kind of skidded away. He picked it up and kept on dribbling. That's a double dribble, Gene. I guess so. I Yeah, it should be. There you so go. So it's just so ironic that on all these stupid uh, you know, foul calls, you know, like, we're completely missing the fundamentals here. I mean, all these travels, all these double dribbles. I mean, let, let's get rid of these fucking uh, fouls and let's call some, like, real stuff and see some real basketball here, huh? How about that? There you go. Yeah, okay. I'm with you. Yeah. And by the way, Gene, I, you know, I heard about all this controversy on Twitter. And uh, so I went back to the, you know, the highlights on ESPN to see what actually happened. And they just showed that foul. They didn't even show that, uh, that heel kick. Um, so, uh, you gotta wonder why aren't they showing that sort of stuff, huh? So, all right. Good analysis by you though. I'm there very you go. impressed. And then what we get, so we have Virginia and Texas Tech playing like right now. Does anyone know what the score is? Do we know? Yeah. Uh, know. Virginia's up by six points. So yeah. Second half. All right. And Typical then, low scoring game. And then someone low. just scored a uh, home run. It would have been a three run home run, but, uh, Puos got, uh, I don't even know who that is. Uh, Puos got, uh. Throwing up. Hey, that, that, yeah. All right. Okay. That's all. Uh, that's all I got, Gene. So, uh, what is your? Right. Uh, what's your schedule here? Uh, next couple of days. Well, I gotta get. I gotta get out of Chicago uh, before the snow hits. So I'll be coming back to LA, and uh, yeah, I got two musicals lined up for the weekend. That's my big plan. All right, there you go. And then hopefully the Cubs. Gosh, they were so good today. So maybe I hope this will launch them into winning some games. No, very they possible. Won. They're three. They're up to three and seven. So it All was right. a great day, though. All right, Gene. I got. I got one more. Uh, one more comment here. One more joke here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about the NCAA Final Four. You know, it's at Minneapolis. It's in the uh, USA yes. Bank. Uh, yeah. You won't see you know, a lot of windows in USA Bank. US Bank. Uh, but right. you won't see a lot of light shining through US Bank's massive clear roof during the first men's Final Four game. That's because local organizers bought five million dollars worth of curtains. To night out the stadium. 
Fi- Gene, <laughs> finally, some birds can get some respite. <laughs> some birds can enjoy yeah. the final four just like everyone else, finally. Huh? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Gene, was that worth uh, stopping the show and going back? I, I think no, so. I, right? I, yeah, possibly. I, yeah. <laughs> Why not? We'll let God sure. be the judge yeah. there on that. All right, so you'll be back uh, for next week uh, for the show? Yep, I will be. I'll be sitting right there with you. Right. We'll, we'll take the green screen somewhere, right? I yeah, guess. Gene, you got to get a portable green screen. I'm. Uh, you can't see this, but I'm actually at Wrigley Field right now. Oh, you are? I'm, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, it's I'm, beautiful today. I'm sweeping I'm the streets. You, it was so beautiful there, and yeah, I'm just glad it, uh, uh, Wednesday's going to be tough. But for one day, it was beautiful. All right. Well, there you go, Gene. That's baseball. Just live yeah. in the moment and enjoy it because it's going to be all over the next day. So that's yeah. a little sad, right? All right. Well, Gene, uh, I think that's going to be it. So uh, let me just uh, cue the music up here. So, uh, well, uh, I, I, I thank everyone in the Midwest who I saw. It was really – people in the Midwest are so great. And uh, this is dedicated to my mom here who's – 38 uh, backwards, inverse of 38. 38, opposite of 38, or turn the numbers around. So, all right. All right, well, uh, for Gene Steichen, uh, my name is uh, Chris Stotz, and this has been the Midwest Sports Show. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.